Good afternoon everyone, magandang umaga, magandang hapon, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the 74th installment of the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. Thank you for being part of our credible online community and to all those who have just discovered us tour today for the very very first time, welcome po at sana po masayahan po kayo at ma-enjoy nyo po ang pagsali sa ating online community. Bukas po, October 16th, the National Capital Region will be downgraded to the to Alert Level 3 dun po sa ating mga Alert Level System. Ang ibig pong sabihin po nito, there will be an increase in the movement for people within the National Capital Region and all those moving in and out of the NCR. So as vaccination rates increase and measures are put into place to open the economy, ang napag-uusapan po dito yung ating safe transport uh, and how it has become a key issue for many many Filipinos all over the country. Ligtas po ba ang ating mga public transportation? Meron po bang sapat na ventilation sa mga trend po natin? Uh, PNR, LRT, MRT. Uh, ligtas po ba pag travel po ba tayo domestically via plane? Uh, paano naman po sa ating mga barko at saka roll on and roll off po ng mga ferries? So if you want to get the answers straight from the most credible experts, please stay tuned. I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health, University of Philippines, Manila. Always a pleasure to be with all of you during our regular Friday lunch date and always look forward to Fridays because I get to share my hosting duties with my partner and my uh, uh, beloved mentor, po, our adjunct research faculty at the National Telehealth Center. Congratulations for being part of the National Panel for Technical Experts on Climate Change, Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado. Hi, Raymond. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Um, San man kayo na ron, we hope you're, you're doing well. And uh, I think people are really looking forward to some ability to move around. So, welcome news naman. Pero siguro, uh, syempre may konting kabaren yung mga iba no, na di naman pwedeng pumunta sa isang lugar, Raymond, ng walang transport, di ba? So, Alam natin itong medyo time na naka-lockdown. If you're at home, di ka lalabas, okay ka lang. Pero ngayon na pwede nang lumabas at nagbubukas na, hindi naman lahat ng tao may sariling sasakyan. So we really wanted to talk about um, transport during the pandemic and what we can all do. So ito naman ay ano no, parang informational. We're going to listen to some experts. Magagaling po na naman ang ating mga uh, mga experts, we have uh, engineers. Sabi nga natin dito sa pandemya, eh, lahat ng talino, lahat ng husay ng Pilipino ay kailangan gamitin natin. So hindi lang po mga doctors, mga nurses, but we have some engineers who are going to talk today about how transport systems can be made safer. So we just like to welcome everyone. And for those of you who are recovering from covid uh, you are in our thoughts for those of you who have relatives na family members or household members na nagka-COVID eh, na nalalangin po tayong lahat na mild lang po at hindi naman po magiging sanhi ng, ano, no, ng trahedya. So matatapos din tayo dito. We, we will make it. Kaya natin to, no The Philippines has gone through so many difficult things. We will get through this one also. So over to you, Raymond. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Um, so, so just to put our discussion into context and for those who are joining us for the first time, meron po tayong tinatawag na person on the street videos wherein we try to interview and get a sense po, uh, a pulse on the street po kung ano po ang mga saloobin ng ating mga kababayan uh, tungkol po sa ating uh, naturang topic for today. It will be about tra travel during the time of COVID-19. Tatanungin po natin sila, sumasakay po ba kayo ng public transportation? Ano po ang inyong mga saloobin? Uh, do you feel safe pag nandun po kayo? Ano po ang ginagawa ninyo para maging safe kayo when you travel? Uh, kumusta ang travel po ninyo? Uh, mamula probinsya kung saan man po kayo magtatrabaho? Ano po ba yung mga napansin po ninyong health protocols? Susunod po ba ang ating minimum public health standards? So all of these will be what we, we will be witnessing po dito sa ating person on the street video care of TVUP. Ah, uh, yes po. Sumasakay ako sa public transport. Pag pupunta ng grocery, ano, isang tricycle or taxi, ganyan, uh, natry ko na rin mag-jeep. Na nagbubok sa Graben, um, 
mag-train or jeep or buses kasi um, I feel safer one of course sa Grab. Public transport sa Loplano. Then after ng Loplano, uh, Grab, taxi, yan. Yun, yun lang. Hindi talaga siya safe. Kasi syempre yung mga public transport natin parang isa sila sa mga apektado ng pandemic. So far naman, I think uh, wala namang, uh, there are risks but as long as na susunod naman yung mga protocols kasi. Isa nasa sarili mo na lang din na mag-ingat ka, ganyan. Kasi ang hirap talaga lalo na may mga iba pang variants ng uh, COVID. Ako nagdo-double face mask ako. Tapos facial kasi tingin ko hindi ko naman kailangan, may salamin ako eh. Pero uh, more on double face mask. Before entering alcohol, and then pagkapasok, alcohol pa rin. Tapos I try not to like palipat-lipat ng upuan sa loob ng kotse kasi uh, yun, para less, um, I mean, less contact dun sa kung ano man yung nasa loob ng, ng sasakyan. May mga lugar na mahigpit, may, may mga lugar na hindi, depende sa LTO. So may mga lugar na kailangan mong quarantine ka. May mga lugar na basta fully vaccinated ka, mabilis yung... Pag-accept sa inyo nung ano. Siargao naman, super organized na yung ano nila eh. Pag, pagdating mo pa lang ng airport, eh, kasi nakarating ka, uh, before, even before makarating ka ng Siargao, okay na yung requirements mo eh. So pagdating doon, i-validate na lang nila. The pinaka magiging problem mo lang doon is pag naging, pag nag-positive yung result mo sa sa PCR or antigen. But all the other stuff, wala naman akong na encounter na problem as in ano naman smooth naman lahat um, siguro yung hassle ng pag-aayos sa system kailangan nilang ayusin yung system bumiyahe ako pero pinabal- pinabalik ako kung kompleto ako ng requirement kasi nga hindi ako nakaregister sa SPAS pero kompleto yung requirements ko na nakadeclare sa SPAS nga lang uh, wala yung SPAS na approve kasi nga yung system nila uh, mabagal or sila I think wala namang problem ngayon if you wanna like go out out of town or outside Metro Manila as long as you comply with the requirements and just an advice then not to ano um magfalsify ng documents kasi maraming ano eh maraming marami akong narinig na ganun. if you wanna go take a vacation okay lang naman because it also helps kasi yung uh, yung turismo doon sa lugar na pupuntahan mo. Thank you very much, TV. We always very refreshing to hear from uh, our persons on the street, ordinary individuals, how they are seeing the issues and um, the challenges of uh, using transport in the time of pandemic. So uh, over to you, Raymond. Thank you, Dr. Susi. Uh, maraming salamat din po sa TVUP kasi very, very interesting po that we're able to get a sense kung ano po yung mga nangyayari on the ground po natin. Uh, I'm noticing that we are just numbering less than ano po, no? 800, well, less than 820 right now. So we hope that a lot of you will still be able to join us. Uh, lalo na po yung mga nag-sign up po. I, we believe uh, there's uh, 1,500 no, ating registrants, Dr. Susie. So at least, sana maka-approximate po natin yung mga... Parang mukhang, Raymond, parang mukhang stuck uli siya kanina. So ah, okay. I sometimes notice it. There's a time na it doesn't move at all. So, but anyway... You know, whoever is here, we are here for you. Yes. Kahit na okay. lang kayo, kahit isa lang kayo, eh talagang <laughs> ano, no, we're gonna do our best to give you a very uh, fruitful and productive uh, two hours with us on on Stop COVID. Yes. That's okay, correct. Go ahead, Raymond. That's correct. And for those who, yung pong ating mga kababayan na sa farther north na nasa lantapon ng Bagyo, um, sana po, ingat po kayo at uh, you are uh, comfortable now and safe. And hopefully, you'd be able to still join us uh, for today's webinar. As mentioned, our webinar can accommodate up to a maximum of 3,000 participants. So please join us 
for you to be able to feel experience the interactive program. We also would like to greet, uh, hello po dyan, uh, kawai-kawai po sa ating mga nag-watch party, nanonood po sa ating live streaming sa YouTube at sa mga Facebook pages po natin ng University of Philippines, Stop COVID Deaths, at saka ng TVUP po. Uh, for those who would want to participate, uh, uh, we would like you to indicate kung saan man po kayo, doon po sa Zoom chat box o sa chat box po ng YouTube at saka sa Facebook po. Uh, we hope that you'll be able to invite all of your colleagues, your friends, uh, your families po to be able to join us and uh, those that are those who are outside of the Zoom, meron po tayo tinatawag na www.menti.com. So meron po tayong code for today that is 8202-5659. 8202-5659. So hindi wag po kayong kakabahan na hindi po kayo makakasali. We will be flashing the fun quiz in a little bit and hopefully you'll be able to join us. And for those who are asking, uh, certificates of attendance will be given to those who have watched at least 50% of the webinar duration. Um, unti-unti pa rin po namin sinesend out yung pong mga certificates, especially for those who have not received. So please let us know by emailing stopcoviddeaths at up.edu.ph. Only those who have watched at least 50% of the webinar duration will be receiving a copy of their electronic certificate. Uy, Raymond! Certificate ko pala yan, <laughs> Yes, that's you. Pero naka-nickname. <laughs> naka, naka, naka so, iingatan nyo po kung paano nyo po siya register kasi yun po ang mag appear sa inyong electronic certificate. Um, uh, just to complete the picture, Dr. Susie, um, those who are joining us, meron po tayong standard panel discussion format we have a main speaker for today. Uh, very rare that we could get even a message, uh, if that's even possible, from uh, from a cabinet secretary. So we are very thankful uh, for the time given to us. And then we will be hearing uh, a few more talks from our other uh, expert panelists, which who we, we have invited for today. And that will be followed by a Q&A session wherein we will be entertaining questions from everyone. So, kung, bang may, kung sa ating mga nasa Zoom po, kung may makita po kayong um, uh, window or notification po na magpa-pop out na nagsasabi if you would like to open up your video and audio, we hope you'll be able to accept our invitation kasi yun po yung invitation para po kayo makapagtanong live sa ating mga panelists for today's webinar. Over to you, Dr. Susan. They're still, uh, some are asking again for the menti. Oh, okay. At TVUP, may we have that flashed again on the screen? Oh, the code for menti.com. Uh, medyo mabilis po yata nating na-flash. But anyway, if you open your browser, you type in www.menti.com and use the code 8202-5659. That's 8202-5659 to be able to participate in our fun quiz. Dito po sa mga nasa Zoom, you'll be able to join us. Uh, dahil meron po tayong Zoom poll na lalabas din po. So, uh, either way, uh, you'll be able to... Mag-teaser lang ako ng konti. Next yes. week, okay. ang format natin. Yes, puro okay. Tayo, puro tayo, Mentimeter, kita, uh, uh, poll. At meron tayong prices. Hala, sinubo na kita, Raymond. May mga prices tayo. <laughs> so, okay I will lang. tell you next, what, the, what the topic is next week, but don't miss it. no Kasi our format will be a little different. Uh, we will have the audience doing a lot of uh, mentimeter and polls. So, abangan niyo po yan next week. Sige. Raymond, go ahead. We try Ibayan to bring... Remarks, ha? Yes, yes. So, as Sige. mentioned by Dr. Susie, we try to bring a little bit more interactiveness dito po sa ating um, webinar. So, next week, abangan niyo po ang aming bagong pakulo for uh, the Stop COVID-19 webinar series. But for today... As mentioned, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you, especially for those who have really um, talagang inaabangan po itong webinar topic na ito. Marami po sa ating mga comments at saka sa mga suggestions and feedback po. Kailan po ba kayo mag, uh, magtatalakay uh, ng topic on traveling during the time of COVID? People continue to look forward to traveling, not just for work, especially well, work for given na po yan. Um, but uh, those who are asking for leisure, uh, if they want to visit their family, uh, your family members, their relatives, their friends coming in from other parts of the country, coming in from outside of the Philippines, traveling 
uh, abroad to other countries uh, ano po ba ang uh, mga current mga polisiya ano po ba mga kailangan po requirements na paghandaan para po hindi po ang pagkita ko po ng mga kumbaga mga beach at mga mountains kasi for the most part nakita po lang natin ang beach at mountains sa mga videos lang o kaya sa ating mga virtual backgrounds no so that's something na a lot of us have indicated kailan po ba ako pwedeng Uh, mag mag travel po ulit. especially will this be another undas will this be another christmas na hindi po ako makap makapiling ng aking mga uh, mahal sa buhay uh, the delta variant of uh, SARS-CoV-2 has made us uh, uh, a bit more cautious Uh, in terms of uh, how we interact with others, ano po ba yung mga available po na mga na space na pwede po nating galawan, especially if it's an enclosed space sa loob ng mga uh, let's say mga sinehan na magbubukas na po, di ba? Uh, when uh, the alert level de-escalates from 4 to 3 starting tomorrow in the National Capital Region, dahil po sa mga enclosed spaces, lalo po kung mahina po di magandang ventilation, uh, hindi po sumusunod sa public health standards, so disease transmission might be enhanced. Uh, we, for the most part, uh, Filipinos try our best to avoid crowded and enclosed spaces, open windows of our homes. Uh, but how do we get really from one place to another safely, especially for those who do not own any private vehicles? Ano po ba yung precautions that we should take to stay safe while traveling? Uh, requirements when moving from one province to another. I'm pretty sure a, a large number of our audience have uh, traveled from one from one province to another. Uh, hinanapan po ba kayo ng mga espas uh, na tinatawag? Hinanapan po ba kayo ng mga barangay clearance at kung ano-ano pa pong mga requirements? So all of these things, uh, hopefully, will be discussed by our esteemed uh, panel of experts uh, as we move on towards uh, better sense Uh, of what we should expect in the coming months, especially since uh, mag-open up na po ang ating uh, well, holiday season. Uh, and we Hopefully, that's something that uh, we should be able to prepare for uh, with, 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 uh, with minimum public health standards in mind so that uh, we won't be able to transmit the virus uh, so much. Okay! So with that, uh, but be, uh, we'll, we'll, we hope that you'll be able to participate dito sa ating next section, uh, which is our fun quiz, uh, both sa Zoom at saka sa Mentimeter. Uh, we hope to flash that on the screen right now, uh, TVUP. There we go. Paano po ang sa my Mentimeter? We have two questions. Uh, those two questions, oh, yun, bago na naman. Okay, uh, two questions for today. Uh, the very first question reads, May plano po ba kayong magbiyahe sa darating na undas o Pasko? Very, very, ano lang po, straightforward question, yes or no. Medyo hati po tayo dito. Uh, 50, 50 plus percent ang sa no, sa yes. Oy, medyo nagbabalik-baliktaran po siya. So, we hope uh, you'd be able to participate po. Uh, I'm seeing also both on the Zoom and on the Menti kung sino po yung mga uh, sumasali. Um, sana po, uh, marami, mas marami pa po ang sumali I'm seeing less than 300 po sa Zoom na sumasali po sa ating fun quiz uh, For our second question, uh, number two Ano po ba ang mga paganda na gagawin po ninyo bago kayo bumiyahe? So, ang nakalagay po dito, multiple choice ha Ang nalagay niyo po dito, um, RT-PCR test, um, antigen testing uh, May dala po ba kayong vaccination card? Nagbabakuna na po kayo, wearing of mask and shield So please let us know by indicating your answers. Uh, Luwag pa sa po tayo ng 400. Hopefully, mas marami pa po ang umated. I just like to greet those who are joining us from the Lorma Medical Center, San Fernando La Union, from SBMA, Olonga po, Sambales, Sangguni, ang panluluwigan ng Iloilo, the Department of Health, CHD, Northern Mindanao, in Masamis Oriental, in Cagayan de Oro, uh, Madrid, RHU, Surigao del Sur, Field Health Regional Office, in the Bangsamoro Administrative Region uh, region of Muslim Mindanao in Marawi City internationally we are also being uh, viewed and watched and joined po by our uh, friends and colleagues from Universitas Indonesia in Jakarta uh, Nguyen Thai Hok Polyclinic in Vietnam Chonin Hospital in Taipei Taiwan Rejang Medical Center in Cebu Malaysia University Ha'il Saudi Arabia Lunichi Ali University of Blida 2 Algeria Colibee, New South Wales in Australia, and University of Glasgow, 
Scotland. Maraming maraming salamat po. We will not be turning off our fun quiz as we move on to our webinar proper. Over to you, Dr. Susie. Hey, thank you very much, Raymond. And thank you everyone for participating in the Mentimeter and the poll. And as I said, next week, puro tayo Mentimeter at saka poll. Saka sabi ni VP Nenny, may premio daw. <laughs> Raymond, ikaw bahala sa prices. Okay. Ito tayo, ito <laughs> Oh, Nasasaya lang namin kayo kasi alam namin, you know, medyo mabigat din yung ginagawa natin. But at least we can learn and have fun at the same time. All right. Uh, we have an excellent lineup of speakers. Ay, matutuwa talaga kayo sa kanila. And kami naman po yung nagpapasalamat na pinaunlakan tayo ng isang ano, no, ng ating kalihin ng turismo. Although because of her busy schedule, she couldn't join us. She did record her presentation para mapaliwanag niya ang ano no ano ang ginagawa ng Department of Tourism dito nga sa safety natin for travel. Okay. So, ang ating guest po ay uh, graduate po to ng economics from the University of the Philippines, uh, undergrad siya masters at uh, siya po ay naglingkod po ito sa ano eh sa presidential management staff. Siya po ay naging undersecretary ng agriculture. Matagal na pong naglilingkod dito sa ano sa sa ating pamahalaan at uh, siya po ay ngayon ang ating kalihim ng tourism. So, uh, I am very pleased to uh, start or welcome the presentation of uh, Dr. Ber oh, Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat. Ito po yung kanyang presentation. UP Vice President for Public Affairs, Ma'am Elena Purnia. UP Assistant Vice President, Maria Angelica Abad, UP Manila Chancellor Carmencita Padilla, Special Envoy of the President for Global Health Initiatives, Dr. Susan Pineda Mercado, TVUP Executive Director Grace Javier Alfonso, UP National Telehealth Center Director Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento. Good day, everyone. This is Berna Roma Lupuyat of the Department of Tourism. It is an honor and privilege to be invited by my beloved alma mater to speak at this Stop COVID Deaths webinar. I am both humbled and grateful for the opportunity to address today's topic, travel in the time of COVID-19. Through today's talk, I hope to convey our position that travel and tourism can still be safe and fun even during the pandemic, and that as a major pillar of the Philippine economy and a provider of millions of jobs, we must continue to find ways for tourism operations to resume across the country. One recent positive development on this front is the government's new alert system for NCR, which replaces the previous community quarantine classification system under alert levels 1 to 4 in the new and simpler system, residents aged 18 to 65 can now do interzonal travel. This means that eligible members of families are now allowed to travel to local destinations that have reopened. We welcome the opportunities that this new scheme allows for tourism, especially on traveling to areas with ample outdoor space, fresh air, and minimal crowds. The best way to restore confidence and inspire travel is to ensure that those who work in the tourism sector, especially those in the front lines of the industry, are fully vaccinated. The Department of Tourism has been ramping up its effort to vaccinate A1 and A4 tourism workers, particularly in the major tourism destinations. In NCR, 99% of our tourism workers employed in hotels across Metro Manila have been vaccinated. All in all, tourism workers in NCR, including those in DOT accredited restaurants, recorded a 98.31% vaccination rate. Nationwide, 55.31% of our active tourism workers in the A1 and A4 groups have been vaccinated as of October 1st, 2021. Simultaneous to reaching the 100% vaccination rate amongst tourism workers, we have also put great attention to building other domestic tourism initiatives that would hasten the recovery of the industry. One of the key actions undertaken by our regional office is to recalibrate our current offerings and create new products and tourism circuits. 
Beginning in 2020, 44 tourism circuits around the country have been validated from food crawls and bike trails to heritage tours and historical caravans. 71 more circuits are now in the pipeline for development. An example of a new product development that accommodates the needs of tourists today is the recently launched Wellness Workation Program, which caters to the work from anywhere crowd looking to add some nature and wellness to balance out their lives. Initial destinations for this program are Tagaytay, Batangas, and Boracay. I know that some of you here, or at least someone you know, has already tried this to cure cabin fever and improve mental health. In the promotion of safe tourism, the DOT has issued about 50 guidelines in the operations of tourism-related enterprises under various levels of community quarantine restrictions. Since only DOT accredited facilities are allowed to operate or reopen, we have seen a rise in accreditation applications since the pandemic began. From 9,442 accredited tourism enterprises in 2019, there are now 11,557 accredited facilities across the country, which is a 22.4% increase. By having DOT accreditation, enterprises indicate that they comply with safety standards, raising consumer or traveler confidence in the process. Another way for establishments to show that they have met global health and safety standards is through the use of the World Travel and Tourism Council's Safe Travel Stamp. In September 2020, the Philippines became the 100th destination awarded with the World Travel and Tourism Council's Safe Travel Stamp. We were given the role of being a safe travels ambassador to our stakeholders, advocating for the use of this stamp to rebuild confidence among travelers. Eligible businesses and destinations will be able to use the stamp once health and hygiene protocols outlined by the WTTC have been implemented. As of October 1st, 2021, the Department of Tourism has issued the stamp to three destinations, namely Baguio City, Boracay Island, and Ilocos Norte, and 216 accredited accommodation establishments around the country with the most number of recipients found in the central Visayas region. Due to the unpredictability of the virus and its mutations, the recovery of the industry has been subject to many stops and starts. However, on a positive note, as of October 3, 2021, 46,380,040 doses have been injected across the country, where more than 21 million Filipinos are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19. In the national capital region, 75.7% are now fully vaccinated and cases have substantially gone down since the last surge in early September. To keep this precious momentum going, we will continue our push for vaccination, the promotion of safe domestic travels and the development of tourism products and circuits that reflect the changing preferences of the new normal traveler. COVID-19 has been a particularly tough adversary, but we now understand it much better than when it first emerged. With more promising medical breakthroughs coming to light, we are becoming better equipped to deal with COVID and hopefully one day soon eliminate it altogether. While it's still around, let's all do our part to stay safe, but just as important, Let's not forget that we can still have some fun and travel to our reopened destinations for as long as we follow the prescribed health and safety protocols. Of course, it would be very much appreciated if you are fully vaccinated first to protect not only yourself, but the others that you may come in contact with as well. My deepest thanks again to the Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, Ma'am Nenny, TVUP and the National Telehealth Center of the University of the Philippines for providing us with this platform to express how safe and responsible tourism can help stop COVID deaths and contribute meaningfully to our national recovery. Thank you very much and mabuhay po kayo lahat. 
Thank you very much. That was uh, Secretary Berna uh, Romo Lopuyat, I think one of the bright, bright spots in this pandemic is having her leading this department and truly sabi nga niya, no, parang um, taking a trip and being outdoors is a way of taking care of your mental health. And I think for our frontliners out there, I know uh, you need, do need that break. And uh, it's very good to hear that the Department of Tourism is doing its best to make it possible. Okay, over to you, Raymond, for our next speaker. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Secretary Berna. Yeah, it's, I can mention po, you know, it's that always that uh, we are able to get a message from a cabinet secretary, uh, let alone the tourism secretary po. So thank you, thank you po talaga uh, for giving us the time and for really providing us with an overview of the work that has been done by the tourism department, uh, especially since we understand very, very hectic po ang inyong schedule. Uh, thank you for letting us know the different measures being taken to protect our tourism industry po. So our next speaker will be sharing his insights on interzonal uh, travel uh, sa ating mga destinations. It really is a pleasure to have with us today. Uh, and uh, belated happy birthday pala na ngayon ko lang nalaman na nabanggit po sa akin kahapon pala ang birthday niya. The Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs and Professor at the UP Asian Institute of Tourism at the University of Philippines, uh, Assistant Vice President Richard Gonzalo. AVP Richard? Maraming salamat, Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Nabanggit lang sa akin, Sir Bert. Happy birthday. <laughs> salamat, salamat. Okay. So, um, nabigyan po tayo ni Secretary Bernan ng milestones ng ating national government and the Department of Tourism kung ano nga ba yung mga measures in order to ensure safe travel in the time of COVID-19. Pero mahalaga pa rin na kailangan nating mag-leverage sa mga initiatives na to and translate this on the ground so that we can ensure safe travel at different levels. So, I'll be presenting uh, my thoughts naman on how can we translate yung mga milestones ng DOT para po safe po tayo makapag-travel sa mga interzonal areas in the time of COVID-19. So I'll just share my screen. Okay, so um, how do we now ensure safe travel in the time of COVID-19, a disaster risk reduction perspective? Okay, um, before, uh, during the pandemic, there's always a concept, um, notion that traveling during the COVID-19 is a formula for disaster. But we have to understand that while there are losses that can be triggered or that can result from traveling outside your usual environment, there are actually um, opportunities to travel safely. Okay? So we have to understand this from the point of view of a disaster. We can actually travel by and uh, addressing some of the components of disaster risk to reduce it to a level to ensure safe travel in our destination. Just to give you an overview, okay, there are ways to make traveling safe or tourism safe if we are able to reduce the COVID-19 related disaster risk at manageable levels. There's a chance na meron pa rin mga losses, pero we can reduce it at a level to ensure safe travel for the general population. And we can do this by looking at the components of disaster risk. Ngayon kasi ang COVID-19 illnesses are actually exposed na po tayo lahat. So what we can do is to address yung other two components, exposure and vulnerability. By reducing these two components, we can address disaster risk. But in the case of tourism, we have to understand that addressing these two components will involve the responsibility or actions from our destination community. Okay, that involves our tourism enterprises, our transportation sector, and our tourists, yung ating mga travelers who travel to these uh, specific areas. Meron po responsibility ang bawat isa to ensure safety in this time of the pandemic. Okay? So I'll be focusing on the two components of disaster risk, which are associated with situations where individuals are exposed with COVID-19 and, and which are exacerbated when the tourists and the tourism workers are vulnerable to the effects of COVID-19. Let's look at how can we manage exposure in this particular situation. Okay. Let's distinguish muna yung concept ng travel. Kasi lagi natin sinasabi, pare-pareho lang yung travel. 
Travel is a generic term, it's a broader term to refer to the movement between geographic locations for any other purpose. Pero if we contextualize this in tourism, medyo iba po yung dating po nito. Because when you go out in a particular tourism site, medyo mayroong unfamiliarity, iba ang drivers natin for going to this site, and basically we're expecting certain surprises to happen. happen okay? So if we visualize tourism, usually tinitingnan natin ang home at ang tourism site natin. But to a tourism professional, tinitingnan natin yung iba't ibang components. Yes, you're going to go uh, take a tra transportation, going to your site, pero you have to stay in a hotel or any accommodation facility. Then you do your activities at tourism site, you go shopping, and eventually you ride the transportation back home. Ito yung major elements that make up tourism travel in almost all areas. Okay? At kung papansin natin, ang daming multiple uh, ang daming points of contact which makes tourism itself inherently risky. Okay? But it doesn't mean na wala tayong magagawa when it comes to reducing the exposure. We have to understand yung nature and exposure first. Okay? Um these multiple points of contacts are actually what characterizes tourism. So we may regulate the activity that we have when going to school, yung travel natin to the market, pero when it comes to tourism, it's inherent talaga in this particular behavior na kailangan marami kang points of contact. You go to the restaurant, you go to the airport or bus terminal, you stay in a hotel, you go to a site, kailangan kasama yan lahat because that's what characterizes tourism. Okay? Pero ito din yung mga multiple points that make tourism valuable to our economy and to people involved in tourism. Tourism activates the different economic sectors. Actually, before the pandemic, ang laki ng contribution ng sector nito. 13% of employment generated are, come, are, are from the tourism sector, and it actually contributed about 12.7% of the total Philippine output. Kaya mahalaga po na i-activate po yung sector nito kasi this means meron pong jobs ang maraming tao when we activate tourism. Also, the points of contact make tourism happen. The elements facilitate movement, and at the same time, ito din yung valued by our travelers. The social interactions, na banggit nga ni Secretary Berna kanina, okay, are the venues that make travel fulfilling for the individuals. These are venues for exploration, creating memories, for personal growth, and even building relationships. So inherent talaga yung points of contact. So given this, risky talaga ang tourism. And at the same time, dahil sa behavior ng tourists, nakakaroon tayo ng mini yet meaningful encounters. We have to recognize this if we want to understand our sources of exposure and how can we reduce the disaster risk to make traveling safer. Because of these surprising encounters, valuable nga ang tourism, pero it becomes very risky. But how can we manage our exposure? Essentially, there are, three, uh, there are some points that we can do, and these are currently implemented now. Reducing the number of guests in a particular area, incorporating physical distancing and health protocols in operations, preferring or suggesting outdoor locations are actually good practices to minimize our exposure. Pero kung hindi naman tayo makapunta sa labas, installing engineering interventions such as glass walls and uh, increasing ventilation are actually good measures. Limiting entry to high-risk destinations are actually ways to reduce exposure. But then, hindi lang to responsibility ng destination o yung lugar na pinupunta natin. May responsibility po talaga ang tourist. Checking in to a, a, accredited a, establishment or um, a, um, accommodation facilities are actually ways to ensure that we minimize our exposure, observing physical distancing, and even in curfew hours and even the capacity limits can reduce our exposure to protect ourselves and to protect our tourism workers. But this doesn't address the entire um, menu of activities that is being offered by tourism. We have to recognize all unaccounted exposure areas, and that can be done. And by doing so, we can actually establish control over these particular areas. So these are some of the activities that ginagawa po on the ground. I've been working with some of our local government units during the pandemic. Kung paano ba nila mamamanage ang kanilang exposure in this time of the pandemic? Okay, opening sites that the local sector can manage. Setting tour itineraries are just one way. Pero we have to communicate yung information na to, to our tourists kasi we want to make certain set certain expectations. On the part of the tourists naman, we have to verify your itineraries, check mechanisms to manage exposure, and compare them, make advance payments to limit our encounters. Okay. Now, sabihin natin we are able to manage our exposure. Pero andyan pa rin, we are still vulnerable with COVID-19. 
So with this, we have to understand that ang tourists and tourism workers are, workers are vulnerable when we still travel. Okay. We can protect ourselves or reduce our vulnerability through vaccination. Okay. But we have to understand that sa laki ng tourism and sa dami ng uh, points of contact, itong vaccination na to must also cover other areas that make tourism valuable. So nabanggit ko kanina, we may have itineraries, pero we also need to consider other areas, yung mga mini yet meaningful encounters, because this is what makes tourism valuable to the economy and to the person traveling. So what can we do? We can reduce vulnerability. Vaccination is actually one way. But we have to consider that vaccination should be for the tourism workers and for those related to tourism sectors. Setting protocols to respond to COVID-19 symptoms are actually ways to reduce our vulnerability. On the part of the tourists, completing your schedule, vaccination is actually one way to reduce your vulner vulnerability. And taking precautions are actually good ways to ensure that you reduce your disaster risk and you can travel safely. But is vaccination and the COVID-19 protocols enough? We have to understand that medyo malaki yung situation natin when it comes to COVID-19. Uh, uh, COVID there are two scenarios na pwede natin makita from severe COVID-19 illness. We can recover from it or pwede magkaroon ng loss of life. In disaster risk reduction, we set these scenarios kasi it helps us plan. Okay? So the first scenario will definitely lead to loss of life and meron kang mga repercussions such as loss of livelihood, uh, emotional distress, and even poverty, especially if the household affected is dependent on tourism. But kahit na meron tayong recovery, there are still other aspects such as depleted savings, emotional distress, and even the reduced livelihood opportunities. These are key components when trying to address our vulnerability. Kasi ang vulnerability natin, hindi lang doon sa time na nagkaroon tayo ng COVID-19. Okay? That being said, setting contingency actions when tourism worker contracts COVID-19, such as having insurance, investing on wellness, a treatment plan, emergency budget, alternative livelihood programs, and even other rehabilitation recovery actions can help reduce our vulnerability. On the part of the tourists, it's important to set plans and the budget in case you encounter COVID-19 in your destination. Knowing what to do, where to go, and setting contingency budgets based on alternative plans can help if you contract COVID-19 in the destination. But since tourists have to go home, you also need to have set plans in case you show symptoms when you arrive home. Ito ay napakahalaga at madalas nakakalimutan po natin. Because when we talk about tourism, kailangan bumalik sa bahay or usual environment ang ating mga turista. Okay? That being said, is it safe to travel in the time of COVID-19? Well, meron tayong mga gagawa to make tourism safe in the time of COVID-19. And the safety of tourists and tourism workers can be ensured if COVID-19 disaster risk is reduced to manageable levels. Yung pinapakita ko mga photos po sa inyo ngayon, these are just some of the shots na kinuha ko po when I traveled in, the in, in this time of the pandemic. And these are actually you know, our, our pictures on the ground na pwede po natin ma-enjoy. And we can actually go to these particular places if we practice the safe protocols and basically address our exposure and our vulnerability. Take note that to ensure this has our safety in this particular period, there are destination community actions and tourist actions. Dalawa po dapat ang nagtatrabaho po dito. The destination and the tourist. We can focus on reducing our exposure at multiple points which characterizes tourism and introducing mechanisms on the surprise components na nakikita natin. We can actually reduce our vulnerability for vaccination and other protocols in case we fall serious, seriously ill. Pero we also need to make provisions in case uh, we, uh, uh, we go through the COVID-19 experience to reduce our vulnerability and make sure that we recover and make uh, and have this uh, um, uh, make sure that we are actually uh, making the most of our travel in this time of the pandemic. Okay, so these are just some of my thoughts when it comes to ensuring safe travel in the COVID-19. Okay, marami, po, uh, marami pa po tayong mga pwede idagdag po dito, but this framework actually helps us to make traveling in this period more safe and more fulfilling. Thank you very much. That's uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Richard Gonzalo, Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs of the UP Asian Institute of Tourism. Maraming salamat. I think that was great to look at a disaster risk reduction perspective and to talk about vulnerability, not just of 
individuals, but of actual places. So we're going to have another speaker. And as I promised you, we have uh, an engineer who was with us before who talked about ventilation. So kilala niyo po siya. Siya po ay um, Associate Dean for Research of the UP College of Engineering in UP Diliman. And we are delighted to have back with us uh, in the webinar, Engineer Gerald Joe Dinoga, or Happy. Engineer Happy. Engineer Happy, welcome to the webinar. Hello, uh, good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me back. Uh, it's great seeing everybody again. I have to admit that for this particular topic, I feel a bit uh, unprepared because I have not been able to travel myself during the, during the pandemic for the past two years. Mm -hmm. But I would like to support what Secretary Romulo Puyot said about how tourism is gradually becoming safer to do despite of the pandemic. I actually have a sister who has been working in the tourism industry for three decades. And she has been traveling both locally and internationally. And she can attest about the strict health protocols that they are implementing. They, the, the, the Department of Tourism, the, the uh, accredited uh, establishments that help reassure tourists that if the safety guidelines are followed, we can still go out and see the beauty of this country. Okay, now given that my role here today is to react as an engineer, okay, it begs the question if our modes of travel around the Philippines safe. Okay, this includes travel by air, by boat, train, bus, shuttle vans, jeepneys, and tricycles. In our travel itineraries, we have to be conscious about all of the modes of transport that we will take. And let's not also forget about the piers, the stations, and the airports where we congregate before embarking on our journey. Professor Richard mentioned a while ago about the different points of exposure. So these all have to be factored in. Most of us are just concerned maybe if one major uh, transportation mode going to whatever resort we might be going to, but then we forget that we might be hopping on, on a tricycle, going by a Jeep, and then taking a bus or whatever. And uh, these all are points of vulnerability as mentioned. Okay. So with so many modes of transportation and infrastructure that one may go through <laughs> and the limited time that we have today, I would like to jump uh, to the basic guidelines that will reduce the risk of infection during travel. And these are, no surprise actually, mask discipline and personal hygiene. Okay. Uh, keep your masks on and uh, sanitize yourselves as often as possible. Your hands avoid touching your face. Social distancing, we all know that. Uh, one meter apart at the very least. Some are actually saying two meters. The most that you can get away from the other passengers in the mode of transport. Regular disinfection. Now this one is actually more for the travel operators where they have to disinfect the vehicles, the surfaces, the seats, the armrests, and all that. And uh, lastly, thorough reporting of health status and vaccination. Okay. okay. Now these four measures might already seem commonplace. Okay. Uh, wherever we go, our homes, going out to the office, but their strict implementation is much more critical when we find our, ourselves enclosed in a vehicle for hours at a time with complete strangers. So by all accounts, this, this, this is considered as close contact already. As tourists, do not compromise your safety if you're about to hop onto a bus or a van or any mode of transport where you see those protocols being ignored. Okay, it's your own health at risk here. On the other hand, travelers, and as Professor Richard also mentioned, must also be more responsible and accountable in following the protocols including getting properly tested. I repeat, tra travelers must be more responsible and accountable in following the protocols, including getting properly tested. For the travel operators, okay, on the other hand, it is not just theirs, but everybody's interest to implement and enforce the protocols. Make sure that your vehicles are in good condition, proper ventilation, properly disinfected, and when you take on the passengers, those tourists, you, you check their data 
the vaccination cards, if they're if, if they're implementing the mask disciplines, uh, if everything is sanitized. You can even provide them face masks, okay, the good ones, okay, if it means uh, making sure that everybody is safe during their travels. Because after all, the infection risk in transportation comes from the people, not from the vehicles. Now, that is why I categorize those four health protocols as human factors. For the vehicles themselves, let me comment about certain modes of transportation, specifically for those with higher passenger densities, meaning mga siksik, okay, um, or more passengers in one vehicle. And many will always be asking about air travel. And I can cite several studies from Boeing, from Harvard, even from the, from the airline operators themselves that air travel is low risk. Okay. Now, the air handling systems on large airplanes, and I mean large airplanes, okay, the, the ones, for example, uh, traveling internationally or um, the, the ones, for example, the six seaters in one row, in all, in, at least, at the very least, okay, they already have HEPA filters. They have huge volumes of ventilation that are up to even twice greater than those of hospitals. And they have individualized air flows, those ones coming from the top, okay, that avoid cross-contamination where the air goes from the top, fresh air, clean air goes from the top, and then is exhausted downwards where you see the, the exhaust or the, the ventilations suck in the dirty air. So, uh, that is what makes uh, air, airline travel actually relatively low risk. However, okay, there's this caveat. These same studies say that the low risk assessment was still based on compliance with the four human factor protocols mentioned. Failure to comply by both the traveler and the airline operator leads to potential infection. So these studies also warned against common passenger behavior that tend to thwart these protocols, such as rush. As when at the end of the flight, we tend to rush and crowd and get our baggage so that we can deplane. Okay. We have to resist that urge. Okay. Um, other studies also suggest, which I concur, that airline operators might want to consider minimizing or alternating the in-flight meal schedules because passengers have to take off, of course, their masks when they eat, okay? which, of course, increases the risk to their adjacent passengers. Okay? Um, most of the studies that I have seen show that when there were intermingling of passengers with their masks off and there were unreported uh, COVID-positive passengers, that was when the, the, the several people on the same flight got infected. However, on the cases where proper discipline were, was, proper protocols were followed, out of almost 4,000 passengers uh, in, for that particular airline studied, they only had maybe one passenger that came out um, uh, positive in their study. Okay, so this is a relatively very low risk. Now, for sea travel, okay, on the other hand, we have big boats, small boats. We have the mga bangka for island travelers, transfers that have good natural ventilation. So inherently, those are okay. Um, and there's also less crowding. And uh, we're normally with people that we already know because those transfers are for small groups normally. So the risk is very low. However, we have big passenger boats. Those, let's say, the, the ferries that go from inter-islands, the big passenger boats. On the other hand, those do not have rigorous air filtration systems as airlines do. In fact, um, the ventilation might actually be quite poor in certain areas of the ship or certain cabin accommodations. So given that you are in that ship for a much longer trip time compared to airlines, to go, let's say, from Luzon to Mindanao, it'll take two and a half days versus hours in a plane. As also, those ships have poor ventilation systems and the inherent difficulty 
for the operators to frequently and thoroughly disinfect the surfaces of the entire ship, it for me is the least desired mode of travel during the pandemic. If uh, one has to travel via ship, avoid crowded areas. Stay in your room and use natural ventilation as much as possible. Now, for road transport, I want to talk about buses and shuttle vans. They also do not have rigorous air filter systems as airlines. Um, however, according to the Department of Transportation, if the distance seating protocols are, are obeyed, as well as mask discipline, the infection risk when traveling by bus or van is reduced. The DOTR also specifies that passengers must be at least one seat apart uh, or 50% capacity in buses and have waterproof barriers between them. We also see those in jeeps. There are standard guidelines already by the DOTR, not just for tourism, but actually for general travel. So uh, as long as certain vehicles and travel routes are approved by the DOTR, then uh, we can say that they have, well, the risk is reduced significantly, okay? But for me, as an additional safety tip, for air-conditioned vehicles, since in buses, the conditioned air in most road transport actually uh, is not filtered properly, travelers should try avoid uh, try uh, or avoid directing the, the, the air blast coming from the air vents from the aircon to their faces. Okay? Direct it somewhere else, okay? Because it's not that clean. Face shields would come in handy at this point. And for the transport operators, I would recommend that, well, uh, in addition to the DOTR mandated non-recirculated mode of their air existing air conditioners, uh, in most buses and vans and cars, actually, there's this little switch there where you allow outdoor air to come in for ventilation. But the actual flow rate is not significant, okay? It provides very little actual ventilation compared to the health standards. So I would actually suggest that transport operators, particularly for the tourism, they adopt active ventilation devices in their vehicles to further reduce their the risk. So these are exhaust fans um, or either exhaust fans or intake fans or preferably both, okay? And as a, per, as a better reassurance also for the passengers, they may also put individual HEPA uh, filtration units at the backrest facing the passengers, okay? And this would, this is a big improvement over the existing protocols. Now for the other modes of transportation, in general, the passenger densities are a lot less. For example, tricycles, motorcycles. Uh, so you only see maybe up to three to maybe five at a time, maybe for the really squeezing ones. But we have to take note that those, those traditional squeezing in can't, no more, no more. So for those, even though the passenger densities are a lot less and the, the associated distance traveled and exposure times are also less, um, the risk is there for less as well. Uh, so jeepneys and tricycles, okay. Uh, I prefer to travel in them compared to enclosed vehicles. Um, the risk is therefore manageable as long as there is, again, no crowding and the mask discipline is enforced. So mostly human factors again. Now, so in closing, referring to what Secretary Romulo Puyat said, there are more and more DOT accredited facilities. These, are, these include tour operators, which also manage the tour transportation. We have our airlines that are DOT accredited and the recognized hotels are, or can also provide pick up and transfer services from the airport back and forth. So the availability of safe transportation is there. Okay, we just have to be aware of what those are. And well, go back to the human factors again. So as tourists, if we stick to the DOT accredited establishments, your travels will be safer. Okay, 
So thank you very much and have a, a good day. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Happy. Uh, very important po talaga from an engineering perspective yung insights with regard and the importance uh, with regards to ventilation uh, when you are traveling. Thank you, thank you. And uh, there are uh, well, there are a few questions uh, that you may be the best person to answer, mamaya sa Q and A, uh, Engineer Happy. Thank you so much. Uh, for our next speaker po, and uh, last but not the least, for our excellent uh, panel, uh, she will be providing a perspective from the travel industry. Uh, we have invited the spokesperson of the Philippine Airlines, Ms. Shelo Villaluna. Shelo? Yes, I'm going to share with you. We are very honored uh, to be here today to respond to the uh, things articulated by our very tourism attorney, Bernardo Molo. First of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Niel for inviting me. And of course, it is to see Dr. Pernia, Director Alfonso, and thank you very much also, of course, to Dr. Susie Pinedo Mercado, and of course, to Raymond and my uh, fellow source uh, speakers, eh? Professor Gonzalo and Engineer Denoga. I would like to uh, respond to the most uh, significant point uh, Secretary Romulo mentioned a while ago. She mentioned that the travel and tourism sector must demonstrate to its stakeholders that health and safety protocols are in place. Because uh, there is uh, nothing better than walking the talk or hearing exactly what your stakeholders, the flying public, and the um, tourism stakeholders would like to see. In Philippine Airlines, I would like to uh, re-echo what uh, Engineer Dinaga mentioned, and I'm glad he did mention it. All our flights have what we call a heavy filtration system. Our modern buses, our Boeing, our Boeing 777s, our A350s, our uh, late model A330s, etc., are all equipped with a HEPA filtration system even before the pandemic. Now, what are HEPA filters? They are called high efficiency. It's a high efficiency filtration system. What does it do? It eliminates bacteria and viruses with 99.9% .9 efficacy. So that is correct. The direction of the uh, airflow is from above downwards towards the passenger, and it goes back to the filtration system, and it comes out again. Uh, fresh air comes out again to, the, to do the process of eradicating bacteria and viruses. Number two, all our cabin crew since last year have stopped wearing the cabin crew uniform, but they are wearing full PPEs. These are full uh, personal protective equipment. They also wear face masks and face shields. And uh, you are right, uh, Engineer Danoga, we have a simplified food service uh, to minimize contact with the passengers without uh, sacrificing safety and quality of service. Now, what does this mean? If you are a business class passenger, don't you know this? We give you the appetizer, the, the aperitif, the main course, the dessert, your coffee and drink after. So it is one by one. Now it is the same as economy class service. Everything is on a tray so to you. And then the uh, cabin attendant leaves and returns later on to pick up your food. This is a simplified uh, food service. And of course, I would like to share that uh, vaccination program and the implementation of the vaccination program is a number one priority of the Lushatan group of companies. In fact, we are happy to report that out of the 4,600 plus employees of Philippine Airlines and the Lushatan group, 95% have already been vaccinated. Uh, no less than our chairman, Dr. Lucia Sitan, has been spearheading vaccination efforts to ensure that all the companies under the group are vaccinated. And uh, we have ordered uh, Moderna and AstraZeneca for the employees. That is spearheaded by the LTG uh, committee. And uh, next, I would like to stress that aside from demonstrating health and safety protocols, uh, Philippine Airlines has been a partner of the Philippine government when it comes to ramping up uh, vaccination efforts. In fact, uh, we have uh, transported 29 million vaccine doses to date from China, uh, transporting them to Manila. These are the vaccination flights. These are charter flights uh, 
coordinated and arranged by the Philippine government. Uh, this is part of our contribution to the Philippines and uh, to the country's vaccination program. From Manila, we also transport the vaccines to different parts of the Philippines, from the Zon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And to date, we have transported uh, more than 15 million vaccines to different parts of the country. Number two, we know that there are a lot of uh, stranded uh, countries abroad, even up to this date, because of the uh, limitation in flights. So uh, since 2020 up to the present, uh, we have been working hand in hand with the Philippine government for the repatriation efforts to ensure that our Tababayans reach the Philippines, to make sure that foreign nationals stranded in Manila will be able to go back to their home countries. So these are but a few of our initiatives that I wish to share. And I look forward to uh, answering your questions a little later on. We know that a lot of questions about what are the newest travel protocols, uh, both domestically and internationally. In a nutshell, uh, the IATF has released the latest resolution, which states that if you are arriving from a green country and you are fully vaccinated, you, all you have to do is uh, present your vaccination card, present your negative RT-PCR test taken 72 hours before your flight to Manila. You have to present that to the uh, check-in counter of our foreign station. And now you arrive in Manila, then you do not have to go through the quarantine period. Now, if you are from a green and no country, but you are not vaccinated, partially vaccinated, then you will have to go through several days of quarantine in Manila and continue on to your quarantine at home until a certain day, okay? So this can be, this is articulated in the latest IATF resolution. Uh, I would also like to uh, inform you that we are very happy with the latest uh, initiatives of uh, various domestic destinations because uh, they have announced the easing of travel restrictions. For example, uh, Governor Gwen Garcia has announced that uh, Cebu province, when I say about Cebu province, I'm not including Cebu City, all cities outside Cebu City, okay, that's, uh, that makes up uh, Cebu province, uh, do not let any more require passengers uh, traveling to these areas to send uh, RT-PCR test results or antigen test results. Passengers may simply uh, present their vaccination cards. But of course, if you're traveling directly to uh, Cebu City, to Lapu-Lapu City, where Mactan Island is, uh, you have to present a medical certificate. So uh, that is, uh, those are the nuances. There are also other cities that do not anymore require RT-PCR tests. They require vaccination cards in lieu of RT-PCR tests. What are these cities? Cagayan de Oro City, Butuan, and of course, uh, Pagadian. And then uh, we also have uh, some nuances like the uh, province of Negros Oriental, where uh, Dumaguete is, they uh, still require passengers to present the vaccination card plus an antigen test result. So um, although the uh, protocols have eased, there are still nuances across all LGUs. So this is a step in the right direction. But of course, the airline industry with list is for all LGUs to ease restrictions and have uniform requirements. Of course, um, Professor Gonzalo and Engineer Denogra also mentioned the S Pass, okay, that is the safe travel pass. It serves as a contact tracing mechanism. So if anything happens to you, they can trace because they have your reward. So the situation has evolved very quickly. Uh, when the COVID 19 uh, quarantine periods started in, on March 16th, last year, 2020, the IATF has not yet been formed. When the, because of that, um, there has been a challenge in determining what stranded foreign passengers should do to get out of their uh, islands, their cities, their towns, and fly back. And how do they connect to areas where flights are operating? So very quickly, we can, if I recall, uh, the role of the local government units are very, very important. Now, what, were the, what was the role of the local government unit then? The role of the local government is for the medical certificates of outgoing passengers who are stranded. The role also of the uh, city tourism councils and uh, the, uh, the city DOTs is to provide uh, letters authorizing uh, 
or requesting checkpoints to accept and let the passengers with connecting flights in other cities uh, to pass through. But then the situation has evolved because uh, this administration has created the interagency task force. So there is an interagency task force on the national level, there is an interagency task force on the regional level. So there has been now an evolution in terms of order and implementation of these protocols. So um, in closing, I would like to announce and uh, share with all our passengers that to all of you out there who are traveling, please do visit our website it is uh, www.philippineairline.com. Uh, you can easily uh, find out the latest travel protocols in any international or domestic destination because these places are listed. All you have to do is click that button when you look for the name of your destination and you will know the arrival and departure protocols. On that note, I am ready to do your questions. And to all of you listening, it is lunchtime, so I hope that you can uh, digest the food and digest uh, the information we are sharing with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's uh, Shelo Villaluna, the uh, spokesperson of the Philippine Airlines for a great presentation. I think it's very clear. And um, you can see in the chat box, a lot of people want to travel already. Alam mo, ano na eh. Inip na inip na, sabik na sabik na ang ating mga frontliner makapagpahinga ng konti. So it's very reassuring to hear all of these things that are going on and to uh, be able to visit the website. I think that's a great uh, a great way to end your, your presentation. It's really like, where can you go for additional information? Okay, so at this point, we'd like to... Um, Call in everyone uh, who, who is here with us, um, Professor Richard Gonzalo, uh, Engineer Happy Denoga, and Shello to open your uh, cameras and your mics. And meanwhile, we are going to have a public service announcement from TVUP. TVUP, take it away. Bye, po. Salamat po. Mama, bayad po. Ako, anak, tabi mo na yan. Para masuklian ko ang mga sakripisyo niya sa taong bayan. Mapagbigay po kayo. Nakikita ko ang mahal na mahal ninyo ang inyong pamilya. Tama ka. Kaya nag-aalala ako. Paano ba matatapos itong pandemyang to? Para matapos, umpisahan na ninyo. Magpabakuna na kayo. kayo, magpapabakuna ako. Okay. Thank you so much, TVUP. The COVID Communication Public Service Announcement is one of the many outputs of the UP research entitled Communicating COVID-19 in Post-Quarantine Philippines. It's headed by our UP Vice President for Public Affairs, Dr. Nenny Pernia, and funded by the DOST PCHRD and the Department of Health through its AHEAD HSPR project. Dr. Susi? Yeah, talagang bakuna pa rin, ano? Uh, really, we really have to continue to encourage lalo na yung mga seniors natin to be vaccinated. Yung pa rin ang panlaban natin. Eh. So we will continue to to play these little reminders. Thank you so much, TVP, for that. And, um, you know, we just have to keep at it. No? Huwag tayong mapapagod, huwag tayong magsasawa sa kapaalala sa mga kasamahan natin pag may pagkakataon magpabakuna na sila. Okay, we're going to open our uh, panel and thank panel discussion and thank you for all our speakers for being here. I think I'd like to start by um, I think we're going to pick up some questions from the audience Raymond, no? but let me let me start by asking asking this question. Um, so right now we're about to open up. So I think question is if this situation continues and we have to continue to be very cautious about COVID-19, what would be the more sort of, I would like to say parang permanent, what, what would be the measures that we have to take that really changes the way we travel? Because, you know, parang... Ako, from a public health point of view, I don't see 
I don't see the uh, the virus eliminated. Not not in the near future. There's only been one virus that's been eliminated completely in that smallpox out of the hundreds of billions of viruses on earth. Only smallpox has been eradicated. Polio has been eliminated and eradicated to a certain extent, although nandyan pa rin yung polio virus. No? So what, what's, the, what's the kind of major shift that, that you're seeing that should happen if, let us say, for the next four or five years, we will still have to be living with COVID? So I don't know. Maybe I'll start with um, uh, Richard. Thanks, Susie. Actually, from my experience with working um, sa mga LGUs natin, okay, itong COVID na to shifted yung kanilang perspective on what, how can they ensure yung sustainability ng kanilang mga destinations. And yung sustainability ng kanilang operations ng activity has something to do with protecting yung, yung, ano, yung health ng mga tourism workers nila. Okay? Yeah. Having said that, okay, meron kasi mga ano, uh, LGUs pa rin na kukontinue to see na kailangan bumalik tayo doon sa usual activities natin. Okay? Pero hindi na mangyayari yun. Mahirap na mangyayari ngayon because um, ilan sa mga sectors natin, nagbabago na, they already adopted the technologies, they already adopted processes. So itong mga models na to are becoming the norm when it comes to transforming our activities. Having said that, we're expecting a change in the product portfolio as far as tourism is concerned. Ang mangyayari ngayon, longer stays, okay? hopefully, okay? pero people will be more um, um, tinitingnan nila paano nga ba ma-insure ngayon yung safety nila when they go to a particular place and ano ngayon yung mga product offerings on the ground where actually pwede ka makakuha ng more value even with lower number of guests. Mas consistent ito. Okay? You have lower number of guests that reduces yung, ano, yung exposure, pero yung value is still the same. So yung sabi ni Secretary Berna kanina na wellness workation, it's actually becoming a trend. Hindi lang dun sa tatlong sites na nasabi. It's becoming a trend in different areas. So yung mga facilities natin ngayon are adjusting so that we can accommodate this type of, ano, of tourism behavior. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm just thinking like, di ba, parang baka dapat yung mga buses natin yung nakabukas. Di ba? Yung parang open yung buses, mga safari jeep, mga gano'n, ano? Kasi, ano, eh, tama yung sinabi ni Richard, eh, no? parang, we cannot go back to the previews. That's, that's, not, that's not the solution. And I think our country is blessed with good weather. So, there's a lot of things we can do. Hindi naman nagsusnow dito, di ba? So, throughout the year, meron lang panahon ng tag-ulan na medyo maiiba ng konti. Pero siguro meron nga, ano, eh, dapat meron tayong pag-iisip na hindi talaga babalik dun sa, dun sa dati. Hindi, hindi pwede. Hindi pwede. Kailangan nag invest na tayo dun sa, baka, you know, it's really safer, it's actually healthier. And maybe, I don't know, we just, we just have to, to find a way to do it. Um, Engineer Happy, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, actually, exacto po yun eh. Kasi... From the point of view, for example, for transportation, where we have, let's see, um, mga inspection services, when we when we renew the franchises and the license of, licenses of the operators, uh, ang una inis pa is uh, roadworthiness, yung mga emissions. But in the light of the pandemic, we we have to really. Uh, at parang monitor and uh, even encourage, either encourage, enforce. Uh, uh, I don't want to use the to use the word force, but to, to upgrade our transportation industry to make sure that they are ready really for the pandemic. Ipong we're not just making a stopgap na mga technologies na yung mga barriers lang na acetates at saka uh, hoping lang na walang walang manghuli sa mga buses na overloading pala. It is really a cultural and uh, uh, cultural mindset both us and also yung operations mismo sa administrat administrative parts where where 
uh, holistic talaga yung yung approach eh. uh, not just emissions performance also look at how well the passengers are being taken care of um, if there is a way to both encourage as well as demote or penalize uh, uh, drivers and operators pagdating sa sa pagsunod sa mga protocols that's an important thing so, uh, so regulation. No? I'm thinking, parang with if you know, we should really have more walking, biking, and that means that we have to also change our uh, attire in terms of what's expected when you go to work or to school. Because part of the things ayo mapawisan, ayo maganito. Because our, our culture expects that you're 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 uh, dressed in a certain way, but. Those things can change, eh, no? Pwedeng baguhin yon para people are encouraged to walk, to use non-motorized transport like uh, bicycles in sh- within short distances, no? So I'm not talking about well, even even within, ano, even within tourist tourist areas, no? Parang uh, pwede pwedeng mangyari yon, eh. and then what you're saying is regulate, no? The bigger vehicles so that we know that they're safe. They're not just safe in terms of mechanically safe, but they're you can't get an infection in these kinds of vehicles. Sherla, what's your thinking about the airline industry? What's going to change? Actually, as early as a month ago, we have already, Philippine Airlines has started meeting with the uh, ATF Tech Working Group because uh, with the uh, presence source of the uh, Delta variant and uh, the variant situation is changing, uh, we also have to regularly monitor and trust and, and recommend uh, certain uh, adjustments in the health and safety laws. Like, for instance, it, is, it was in areas from that uh, proposed the IATF uh, technical working group that passengers uh, flying to Mala must be able to present a negative PCR test at the check-in counter of the foreign point of origin. So this is an added safety measure. Tapi wala yan, no? Then they fly to Mila. They, uh, they already uh, have their negative RT-PCR test. And then uh, prior to latest relation, of course, arrival in Manila, then they go to the uh, mandatory quarantine with RT-PCR at a certain day. And then they are released by the they are released by the OQ of Bureau of Quarantine to even to they continue home quarantine. So uh, the, uh, the set of say, health and safety protocols, Doxun C, is something that is evolving. It is ever-changing. It is something that has to be revisited, uh, contingent on the uh, health and uh, safety uh, situation and presence of these variants. And uh, the uh, IATWG, of course, uh, our leaders have met with uh, Dr. Salante. Okay, so uh, he's a... A health practitioner. So uh, this is studied, and uh, Paul does not uh, report to the meeting alone. You know, our fellow stakeholders, the other airline companies are also present. This has become an industry concern. So um, if uh, I would uh, reply to your concern, uh, what if, you know, the situation uh, becomes more interesting. What if uh, you know it? Uh, this situation does not improve. Then there is something, I mean, health-wise, and the new virus, then we adjust accordingly. You know, it is evolving. It is never static. Uh, and of course, uh, I would like to add, though, in Philippine Airlines, and I can speak for the airline industry, it is only the flight component that's called by DC protocol. It is every phase of the passenger journey. From buying your ticket, we have acrylic barriers so that passengers uh, and the uh, service provider, the ticketing agent, have a barrier in between of them that is part of the, uh, that's a safety net. And then there is social distancing in the seats inside uh, the ticketing office. And of course, uh, in the check-in counter, there is a process, you know, the process of checking in and uh, going to the boarding gates. Uh, all our passengers, they have what we call the, uh, the checks, document check. And then the alcohol, there are disinfectants all over the airport. We coordinate uh, that also with the MIAA. And the MIAA has been very active in ensuring that all of these are in place. And uh, of course, uh, 
the actual flight experience all the way to the arrival phase of the flight. And uh, that's our role as the airline operator, but it is a shared responsibility. The passengers must all do their share. You know, that's why uh, you are correct, Professor Gonzalo, that it is not only the point of travel, but all of these interconnectivity uh, phases in the journey. Because whatever you do in base of destination, then that you carry that with you when you fly back to Manila. So uh, it is a, a joint effort among all stakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shello, for that uh, for that explanation. I think as we progress, we will see improvements. For example, in testing, now we're already seeing that you know all over the world, antigen testing has become uh, more of the norm. Now we will get better at that. Eh, na, uh, you could you could do uh, testing before entering an airport, for example, right? So that throughout malinis na malinis na yon. So maraming mga pwedeng mangyari. Okay, uh, engineer happy wanted to say something. Go ahead, please. Jump in. Hi. Yeah, actually, in addition to not just regulation and the protocols, I actually wanted to also emphasize the use of technology. Because uh, we, should, we shouldn't we should really be focused on what we are using now. And again, think of just this pandemic as parang transient, the parang stopgap technologies of kailangan. But for example, um, uh, see, see Shiloh Karina mentioned about improving their filtration systems, but we can do that as well, for example, for the jeepneys, for the buses, where I have seen uh, in abroad where they try to implement uh, active uh, exhaust systems on an individualized basis, as well as, for example, they put sensors to to monitor if there is really a buildup of bad air inside the vehicles. And even in the masks themselves, eh, tipong, uh, we always go for the low-end masks, the cheaper ones, but then it's worth maybe investing to say, I don't know, just the, uh, uh, we, can, we, can, we can give out better masks when we are traveling. Okay? Yeah. I have heard some doctors do that. Eh, na yeah. they, they reserve their better masks when they're going on planes or buses. Because okay? yeah. surgical masks, they're not even as good compared to the N95s. Malayong malayo eh. So technology, we use that. Yeah, nice, nice, nice inputs. I agree with you. No, parang there are many things we, we just need to think outside the box a little bit. Uh, Professor Richard, go ahead. Ayun. Um, actually, one key, gusto ko yung nasabi ni Shelo kanina about yung collaborative effort to talaga. It's not just the responsibility of the destination or the transport sector. The tourist or the traveler also has a responsibility. And um, sa ating mga destinations, actually we can shape yung behavior ng ating mga travelers and set the expectations how should they behave in a particular area. Okay? So kung dati-dati ay bukas talaga yung mga sites mo okay? without any warning na bubuksan lang namin to. Okay? Of course, you're opening yourself up to a lot of unexpected and surprise visitor behavior. Okay? And nangyari yan before the pandemic, eh, nagkaroon ng mga trend na mga so-called organizers na kung saan nag-organize talaga ng mga large groups going to a particular area with low cost, pagkatapos yung responsibility naman ay pinapasa sa destination pero wala namang, ano, wala na, na, na hindi naman handa to natanggapin yung mga turistang ito. So with this COVID-19 experience, okay, ang mangyayari dito is that we may be mindful kung sino din yung mga turista that we are taking in, pero it's very important na kilalanin natin or i-recognize natin na ang ating mga tourists also behave in a certain way. So explaining to them and basically having their commitment then or setting their expectation how to behave in a particular area can ensure our safety in a particular place when they travel. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just thinking, uh, Professor Richard, no? that, that also applies to ports, right? Or bus stations or, or airports na we probably need to retrofit now places so that hindi nagsisiksikan. Alam nyo naman yun, di ba? Pag undas, uuwi ang siksikan yun, pila-pila, no? We really have to start redesigning para, ano eh, no? Para natural lang na malayo, natural lang na maduwag ang mga, ano, ano ang mga bus stations, uh, boat stations, 
ports not and airports. Anyway, uh, Raymond, um, you, you were going to ask a question? Or yes, we have Dr. Susie. Yes. Yeah, the, this one, um, before I call on uh, one of our um, members of the live audience to answer uh, to ask a question, this question that I will be posing comes from Dr. Ross Alvaro, but this question po kasi is uh, just one of the many similar questions that we have been receiving with regards to people traveling internationally, papasok po ng Pilipinas, at as may karag-karag po silang mga minors, uh, maybe baby, mga 5 years old or mga less, less than 12 years old, syempre hindi pa po sila pwedeng bakunahan. So, uh, I'll direct this to Philippine Airlines kay Shell. Um, ano po ba yung mga requirements and uh, is there something that they would really need to uh, well get ready or prepare for, especially since the, they will be traveling with minors po? Yes, you know, uh, Doc Ray, that is uh, a challenge no? because uh, as you mentioned and as we all know, hindi pa binabunahan ang mga minors. Magsisimula lamang sa araw na ito. But to be very transparent, uh, alam natin na pinapayagan ng Philippine government yung mga uh, Filipino balikbayan, sino ba, to return to the Philippines together with members of their family. And that includes also youngsters, sino ba? Because uh, for as long as uh, they are balikbayans and uh, and if, if they are arriving also as permanent residents, hindi ba? So, yung mga minors uh, go through the same uh, quality process. And uh, they go in quarantine with their parents. May provision po sa ATF na dapat one room per, per traveler. Pero certain extraordinary cases, pinapayaga na more than one in a room. Halimbawa, mag-asawa o kaya may minor child. Siyempre, kailangan kasama yung mother. Hindi ba? So these are certain uh, situations as far as quarantine uh, conditions are concerned. So babalikan po natin. Responsibility rin ng airline implement yung uh, government to call. So, but responsibility rin ng mga, pami ng mga pamilya na parating sa Pilipinas, ito yung mga group of travelers na pwede pinapagal ng ating diyan. Umalik, dapat po nakikita nila na masama yung health condition ng mga bata, hindi ba? May mga simptomas na dapat talagang ipagpaliban ang biyahe. But of course, hindi yan talaga matatago because uh, merong uh, thermal scanning system sa airport wherein bawat pasaheros kinascan, hindi ba? Ito ay responsibility ng airport authorities, yung mga thermal scanning. So may threshold po yan. So malalang. So dapat talagang uh, very uh, dapat full of integrity yung implementation very strict yung implementation and to be fair yan po ang nangyayari sa ngayon and uh, just to add because we're talking about the integrity di ba kuno ang gagawin may mga minor children no um halimbawa domestic naman uh, a little a little i will regress a bit no uh, on what dr Susi mentioned just to add to dr Susi, yung what is now how do we sustain what do we do next you were mentioning about RT-PCR antigen. RT-PCR is still the standard when it comes to uh, determining uh, the status of the person, whether he or she has COVID-19. That is our gold standard. But, uh, inaallow ng iilang mga LGU ang antigen test. So, yan. May, may choice to yan. So, uh, that is something. So, it's self-regulation also. Number two, meron po tayong mga sitwasyon na May mga ibang elements, may ibang tao, ayaw nilang, they don't want to go through the standard and the legal way of getting their RT-PCR certificates. No? Gumagawa ng mga fake. So nalaman namin yun, no? nakikita po natin. So kami po sa Philippine Airlines, to ensure the integrity of the process, nag-tie up po tayo sa uh, PNP Aviation Security Group. No? May team ang Aviation Security Group. Pag makita po namin, fake yung RT-PCR test because we have a okay, of determining. I cannot divulge because that is uh, confidential. But we have a way already of determining if it is fake or not. Pag nakita po natin fake, tatawagin ng check-in agents namin, yung frontliners namin sa airport na fake, at tara na ang pre-aviation security group, i-hold yung pasahero, and the appropriate charges will be filed. No? And uh, i-determine yung guilt ng pasahero. Siya ba ay biktima rin? 
siya ba ay niloko, nalin lang siya, o talagang deliberate yung kanyang participation sa infraction na yun. So, that is in response to Doc Susie's uh, question earlier. So, I hope I was able to answer your question, uh, Doc Raymond. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Very important, uh, lalo na po, may mga nagsasabi rin po na maray po tayo sa mga kababayan natin. Uuwi, uh, lalo po sa Undas, but more, more especially para sa Pasko and the New Year po. Okay. Um, we'll move on yes, I to... Would, yeah, I would like to... Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah very quickly, ang tabayanan po ninyo, uh, yung uh, mga anun mula sa IATF, lalong-lalo na uh, bagong-bagong balita, rinerevise ng ating gobyerno yung listahan green countries. Pag sinabi natin green countries, ito yung mga countries that are classified as areas which have effectively and successfully dealt with the COVID-19 situation or countries na bumaba na yung mga COVID cases. So sa current resolution ng IATF, inanunsyo po nila kung kayo ay galing sa green country at vaccinated, paglapag ng Pilipinas, hindi na kayo magka-quarantine for as long as you present a negative RT-PCR test sa point of origin. So yung sa ng green country, uh, Una, medyo mahaba yung listahan, pero last week kumonte, ngayon ine-expand ulit. Ang kabayanan natin. If you are coming from a red, as a yellow country, mga nagtalong dyan, no, kanina, uh, like the United States. Ang United States po ay yellow country. So you're arriving from the United States and you are fully vaccinated. You can still fly to the Philippines, but you will have to stay in Manila, uh, quarantine facility, for a six-day period, RT-PCR on day five. If you are from a yellow or green country, partially vaccinated, or, or the vaccination records cannot be verified, then you have to go through the eight-day quarantine with RT-PCR on day 10, and you continue on to your 14-day quarantine at home. So we would like to in everybody to monitor because there are mga announcements in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you, Shelo. Very important po, no? Uh, resolution numbers 143 and 144 uh, recently issued po uh, by the IATF. Very, very important to note uh, the expansion of uh, the list of green countries as well as the protocol for unvaccinated or at least hindi ma-verify ang record, partially vaccinated and those fully vaccinated. So thank you so much uh, to Philippine Airlines. Um, we'll call on Dr. Joseph Tortona, our regular avid viewer po, no, of the Stop COVID's webinar series to ask his question live, direct it to any of our panelists. Dr. Tortona? Uh, yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes po, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, so with local uh, IATF regulations and travel, okay na po yun. We can understand that. But Ang question ko po yung travel abroad, especially hindi yung magtutulis ng ba't yung mag-work abroad. Kasi as I've, as I've heard, may mga countries na namimili ng vaccine. So how can we deal with that and how can we help our workers going abroad? And by the way, sa pantanong, are the countries reciprocating our policies in terms of tourists? Thank you. Okay, uh, who would like to answer yes, that? Uh, can I answer Hello, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to answer the question, Doc. Um, you know, there is no one single answer to traveling abroad. You know, traveling and being received by the uh, uh, foreign uh, country. I would just like to cite an example. For example, right now, travel to Hong Kong. Okay, Hong Kong, the administrative region. Uh, ang pwede lang pumasok sa Hong Kong are our foreign domestic workers. Okay? So, Fino domestic workers. Ang tawag nila ng Hong government, foreign domestic workers. Ngayon, nagkaroon ng debate several months ago because ayaw i-accept ng Hong Kong government yung mga LGU vaccine card. Hindi ba? Na pwede lang accept. Kaya nga, this gave birth to the DICT's uh, Vaxxer Philippines. Hindi ba? So, Ina-accept na yon para sa mga domestic workers na balik, yung yellow card, well, aside from the absurd feelings, na itong yellow card na issue, na ini-issue uh, ng Bureau of Quarantine. 
So lahat ng mga domestic workers na pabalik ng Hong Kong, whether they are working as helpers or whether they are working for other companies and are considered OFWs, they have been go- getting it from the BOQ. There is an email in the BOQ website. You just write the email, write them, and you upload your vaccine card. And this uh, yellow uh, card certificate, yellow card, and that's what you bring. So, iba, uh, iba, iba. No, there are other countries. Now, when you when you travel to the country, they will say, "Ah, uh, the virus." So, na na puyo. It's a late IVF resolution. Ati ng gupit doctor Ray Monina. Um, tatlo that. Tatlong ways, no? tatlo ang mga proof of the vaccine cards, yung vaccine fillings uh, issued by DIT. Okay. And then you also have your uh, yellow card. That's another option. All travelers, okay. Uh, issued, of course, by the OQ. And then if you are, if you secured your vaccination in a foreign country, and that foreign country has a limit of reciprocity, with the Philippine government, and the foreign countries, a mechanism certificate can be vaccinated in the Philippines. That is a challenge because there are only a few countries that have reciprocity arrangements with the Philippine government. That's why ang panawin sa DFA finalized in sa pinal na yung listahan ng mga bansa na may reciprocal arrangements as far as vaccine cards are concerned. Hindi ba? These are countries na accept nila yung vaccine Philippines. Pagbalik mo naman, ipapakit yung mga kabayan natin na katira sa, sa abroad dahil may uh, reciprocity na pwedeng kunin sa website ng foreign government. So, yung po yung masyages. But I hope in the coming weeks, days, weeks, or months, maay na din po ito. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shelo. Did you have any follow-up questions, uh, Dr. Tortona? Uh, yes. Uh, yung, ang question ko po kasi yung uh, sa London, gusto nila AstraZeneca. So, paano yung work sa, sa nurses? Yun lang po. Yung brand na gusto nila, I mean, yun ang parang black against our, against our Filipino workers going abroad. Yes, that is correct. Uh, for UK government, for present, Pinadala po natin sa London ay our essential travelers. These are Filipino citizens with work permits or Filipino citizens na per present na kung Pilipinas at stranded dito. So yun lamang ang ina-accept. So you are correct, uh, merong mga vaccines na ina-accept lamang ang uh, UK government. And if you do not, you are not uh, vaccinated by that brand, you are governed, sir, by a different set of requirements. So, dahil nage-evolve itong requirements, sir, I would like you to, re- to visit www.philippineairlines.com. Yan ang ginawa namin sa website. Pag bumisita ka, ang una mo makikita travel requirements. Hindi mo na advertisement. Travel requirements na nakasulat. And then you will click whether international or domestic. Makikita po ninyo yung latest. Mahirap po magsalita because ito pong mga travel requirements ay pabago-bago. No? So even as we speak, pabago, binabago. So minsan, pag I say something, pag binisita yung website, ay na-update na pala. So mas mahalaga, hindi po close ang doors ng London. And mas, uh, I'm very happy you mentioned London no? because uh, Philippine Airlines is operating special flights to London within the month of October Uh, November, December, and January. Tuloy-tuloy yung ating mga flights. Now, what are special flights? No? Pag nakita po natin na merong clamor for flights to a certain country, pero limited, no? we allow, we make arrangements with the Philippine government to allow us to operate. And we were granted uh, twice-weekly flights no, to London all the way up to January 2022. So, that, that's an added advertisement on my part. But please, do visit www.philippineairlines.com to find out the latest requirements for both vaccinated and unvaccinated travelers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shelo. Um, Raymond, did we have another uh, another question, or you know, we're just just the, just the one question, Doctor Susie. I think that's very important. But I wanted to uh, get this question out of the way. I'll, I'll direct it to Engineer Happy. 
uh, engineer happy would you have uh, or maybe uh, avp richard would you would you have any idea or as to the studies that have been conducted on mass transport uh, ano po ba yung mga kailangan uh, na irekomenda i mean you've already mentioned uh, your 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 insights on this but uh, in terms of uh, the research that has been done would you be able to share po with our audience uh, anything with regards to that um well for i good i've read up the most and we're also doing some research on our own um so we have targeted the three major transports airline um airline bus uh, actually airline is okay so uh, i already mentioned that a while ago so maybe trains buses and jeepneys okay at least uh hindi lang siya pang tourism so in common is the, the placement for of proper ventilation systems okay so as mentioned for a while ago if there are things like you could um, put individualized air zones for passengers for 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 isolation of the air and proper um, ventilation that can be done for, for both buses and jeepneys and there actually have been studies already not just to implement such technologies already on buses, uh, similar to how they do it actually in the in the airlines. So it's actually good, safe that in. Um, and for so those are essentially for air conditioned systems. For and similar systems can also be adopted for jeepneys. However, it will definitely entail additional cost to the operators, which that is my fear and maybe why there is some hesitation for, for government to, in, to impose stricter res, uh, requirements for vehicle um, for, uh, accreditation. Because, of course, it's more and all that minimum wage. So, that's difficult. Now, thank you, Engineer Happy. I mean, thank you. Um, I usually don't like to make policy comments on this webinar. I think that's where that's where government can actually provide um, resources for operators of transport systems to upgrade in the form of uh, grants or very, very soft loans because we can't afford to not do it. So the burden should not be on the sector, but it should be something that the government can, can enable if we want to open, open the economy and keep Keep people safe. Anyway, Raymond, baka may question pa dyan. Malapit na tayong mag-closing. Okay. Uh, the, the one that uh, I've tried to pick po in terms of uh, um, what do you call this? Um, questions and uh, ag aggregating all of these would be um, in, ter in terms of uh, monitoring ng adherence. Eh, Siyempre, ano na to, no? It's more of uh, operationalization on the ground. <laughs> Uh, and since we have uh, Philippine Airlines, I'll just uh, call on Philippine Airlines again. Um, when you're on that, when you're, when you're flying in the plane already, um, kung may mga let's say uh, ayo po magwear ng mask or anything of that sort, uh, how 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 do the flight attendants take care of that? <laughs> Michelle, Michelle, how, how do the flight attendants take care of that? Pag mga ganon po. Okay, uh, thank you for the question, Dr. Mon. Number one, uh, flight attendants will read the requirements or articulate the requirements to the passenger. And then if the passenger still refuses, then you go to a higher level. You know, you have to report that to the purser. And then the purser will take over. And uh, kung ayaw pa rin, syempre, compromise and health safety ng, ng katabi, mm -hmm. there is... Uh, a rule we have a rule in we uh encourage we uh pull the pass we tell the passenger to proceed to the back area of the aircraft para magkaroon siya ng debriefing no kung ayo pa rin pumayag uh then uh, we will inform uh ground staff so pag the things sa Pilipinas or sa Manila uh, hub no then uh, papasok yung mga authorities maari at kakasuhan yung pasahero for violation of uh basic health protocols, and compromising the safety of fellow passengers. Pero alam mo, Dr. Raymond, hindi pa nangyayari yon. 
uh, sa Philippine Airlines. Good so to we're know, very good happy to know. na Yes, we're very happy that uh, our passengers have been very compliant, hindi ba? Uh, and uh, if ever there were occasions, it's a rarity. It's a rarity. At sila po ay nakokonvinsi naman kapag uh, successive yung re verbal reinforcement. So yan po ang uh, ating uh, mensahe sa ating mga pasahero. Napakahalaga po ng health and uh, safety protocols. This is not only uh, for your fellow passengers, for, for yourself, di ba? but also for your fellow passengers as well. And the safety of the public. And paglapag sa point of arrival, kapag you continue violating, uh, it will affect uh, other, air, other people within the journey. So napakahalaga po ng compliance. Strict compliance. Much. Yeah, thank you very much, Shelo. Uh, there's a question here. I'll pick it up, Raymond. No? Uh, it's for you, Shelo. If it's a long flight, uh, face mask is still reinforced. It's still being still reinforced. Yeah, wearing a face mask is still being reinforced. Uh, I mean, if it's a long flight, let's say it's uh, Sydney to London, something ganon po or something. I don't know. Yeah, okay. We don't have Sydney to London. We have our small flights, uh, the US, Manila, London, the Canada. Even our regional flights, even our domestic flights, it's the same. They have to keep their masks on and their face shields on. The only time they can remove it if they are having a meal. Okay, so yun po yung uh, requirement. That's required sa pasahero. They keep their face masks and face shields on. The only time they can remove it if they are having their meals. So yun po yung aking kasagutan. Mahirap, pero yan ang contribution ng passenger side para sa all safety. That, that rule applies also to our cabin crew. They wear their PPEs, face masks, face shields. All throughout the flight, they only remove it during meals. And may I add also, disinfection. Our cabin, our uh, staff disinfect... Uh, Aircraft stresses, our lavatories, our walls, our, you know, the tray tables and the back rest of the, the back of the seats, the back. In front of you, you see the back of the seats, the back. Yan, in a high grade eco friendly disinfectants are applied before and after every flight. So I, I forgot to mention that a while ago. Okay, thank you, Shello. Okay, thank you. So, we, yeah, it's, we're close to the top of the hour and we'll have to close very soon. I think this discussion could go on longer uh, and there are many questions in uh, both the Q&A box and uh, in the chat so if our guests would like to respond to some of these um, then please go ahead and respond to our participants but Raymond's going to share the results of the poll and I think we're going to get the results from uh, Professor Richard. Go ahead Raymond. Thank you so much uh, Dr. Susie. Ito po, no? hindi po siya, for those on the oh, Zoom. Wala pala, hindi... mali, ano? plano lang, anong plano? Plano pa lang. Tsaka ito po, the first question, well, at least for Zoom, hindi po siya talaga um, dinoktor, kumbaga. Kasi uh, in the Zoom, talagang hating kapatid, 50-50 po talaga. May plano po ba kayong magbimiyahe sa darating na Undas o Pasko? 407 of the respondents said yes. 407 of the respondents also said no. So talagang hati-hati po ang <laughs> mga magbabiyahe po. Maraming uh, maraming magbabiyahe. Correct, correct. Po. Para sa akin yun ang ibig sabihin. Maraming magbabiyahe. So tama lang na pag-usapan natin yung safety. Go ahead. Yes, Raymond. yes. Thank you, Dr. Susie. And then our second question, um, ano po ba ang mga paganda na gagawin ninyo bago po kayo bumiyahe? Uh, the, for, for the most number of answers, at least in the Zoom, uh, dalhin ang vaccination card for proof of vaccination uh, followed by uh, wearing of face mask and face shield and then RT-PCR test result and then also uh, bago ang ating antigen testing uh, dito po nakabanggit iba-iba po no ang pinakamarami po dito is again uh, well almost pareho pala wearing of face mask and face shield tsaka vaccination we bringing vaccination card as proof of vaccination almost pareho po sila uh, followed by budget. Ano po ba itong budget na ito? Uh, Paano ka naman magbibiyahe kung wala kang budget? Ah, okay. Kala <laughs> <laughs> ko, ko may ano, may kinalaman oh. sa protocol, but okay. Meron kang, meron kang pera. Meron kang okay. ano. 
Oh, okay, oh. okay. Tama naman. Tama naman po. Uh, that's followed by uh, what will you be doing in that area? The RT-PCR tests and then antigen testing and temporary accommodations while waiting for the test results. So thank you po sa lahat-lahat ng mga sumali po sa ating Zoom poll and Mentimeter. We also have our evaluation poll. There, ay, hindi pa po ito ang ating evaluation poll. Can we have the evaluation poll please? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Those Raymond, in the Zoom. Na, na, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yan, um, for our panelists, uh, during this time, we're giving you a few moments just to uh, think about a parting message for our frontliners who are watching. And you can see on the chat, they're all very appreciative of, uh, of this discussion. Many of them are frontliners, but they also have to travel to and from work and will probably have to consider uh, traveling during Christmas or during other holidays. So, uh, please think about your ano, your parting words. Go ahead, Raymond, with our ano, evaluation. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Um, the evaluation consists of five questions uh, answered by a Likert scale. Again, ulitin ko lang po, sa mga, lalo na po sa mga very first time attending, wala po kaming nilalabas ng mga evaluation links. Ito na po yun bale. So hopefully, those who are in the Zoom numbering uh, a, lit a little over 1,000 will be able to join us. I'm seeing uh, paunti-unti po ng mga sumasali sa ating evaluation poll. First question reads, panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. Panelists were well prepared and organized. Number two, number three, panelists spoke clearly and audibly. Number four, panelists used appropriate language with technical medical jargons adequately explained. And number five, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing various key COVID-19 health issues. Now for the final messages uh, from our panelists. Okay, so thank you very much, Raymond, and thank you everyone for participating in the evaluation. Nakatulong po ito talaga sa atin. Uh, let's start with um, Jello for your parting words. Yes, uh, I'd like to speak in Tagalog. No? Una-una sa lahat, uh, ang dapat niyong gawin bago kayong magbiyahe ay bumisita po sa website ng inyong airline na sasakyan or bumisita po kayo sa website ng local government unit. Hindi po nakasalalay kung RT-PCR antigen. Depende po yan sa uh, requirements ng LGU. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doc Susie, Doc Raymond, Dr. Pernia, and uh, of course, uh, Director Alfonso and everyone involved. As a graduate of the University of the Philippines, it is my honor to be in the company of luminaries. And it feels like home, you know, to go back. Uh, this is like home, although we're on virtual uh, connectivity. Uh, I'd like also to take this opportunity. Kami po sa Philippine Airlines, uh, gabay po ng success ng aming protocols, yung ating mga lab partners, no? yung mga doktor, mga nurse, ating uh, lab partners, and then uh, yung para sa aming mga non-OFW, sila po ay uh, sinaswab ng, uh, ng uh, PCG, no? Philippine Coast Guard, and then of course, nariyan po ang BOQ na nag-issue ng mga certificate. Pati na rin ang uh, Philippine National Red Cross, uh, they're part and parcel, of course, of the process. Sila po yung ating mga heroes. Sila po yung ating mga sundalo sa field na who really risk their lives and limbs and sacrifice, you know, in uh, them, their lives in the service of others. I would like also to take this opportunity to thank our pilots, our cabin crew, our frontliners on ground and in flight. Kayo po ay... Uh, heroes and heroines, no, not only of the national flag carrier, but of the country. So uh, we'd also like to thank uh, our leaders. You know, uh, We may come from different political affiliations, but at the end of the day, we are one country, we are one people. Together, that is the only way we can succeed. So thank you very much for this invitation and a pleasant day to all Thank you, you very much. That's Shello Villaluna of Philippine Airlines. And uh, let's go to Engineer Happy. Please go ahead. Hello again. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in closing, last siguro, I'd just like to say that uh, uh, a safe travel is actually, it is the role of both operators and ourselves as travelers. So uh, we are also responsible for the safety of other passengers there. So make sure that you get yourself vaccinated, make sure you get tested before you go on to the, to your, on the bus, or the boat, the the airplane and um, and try as much as possible to follow the protocols and when you and if you do hopefully you will 
finally makapagbakasya na rin tayo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Happy from the College of Engineering. Let's go to uh, AVP Richard Gonzalo. Go ahead, please. Salamat sa pagkakataon to share yung aming perspective naman from the tourism sector. Okay? I would like to emphasize na ang safety okay, in the time of COVID-19, particularly in traveling sa ating mga destinations, are the joint responsibility of the sector and the travelers. While ang ating sector could actually implement yung mga measures to reduce um, exposure, to ensure the safety of our guests and the workers, may responsibilidad po na gagampanan ang ating mga turista, ang ating mga travelers, to ensure na uh, maganda po ang ating experience, masaya ang ating experience when we travel to these destinations. Marami na po tayong milestones as far as tourism and travel is concerned. Okay? Nandyan na po yung pagbabakuna, nandyan na po yung mga protection, and then na po yung mga guidelines. Pero meron pa po tayong mga pwedeng gawin by looking at the core of what ensures our safety okay, when traveling to our destinations para po mas maging maayos okay, at mabangon na rin natin, may bangon na rin natin ang ating tourism sector. So yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Uh, that's that's uh, AVP Richard Gonzalo of the Asian Institute of Tourism. Okay, so we're uh, closing now. and um, just as a brief wrap up, I think Secretary Berna's presentation really gave us a broad overview of what the tourism sector has done. And in fact, as I said earlier, she's one of the bright spots in our during this pandemic. Um, it's not been easy for any of the government agencies, but tourism department has shown that they have very high vaccination coverage. They are thinking very strategically, pili-pili yung mga lugar na binubuksan nila, pero yung pinipili nilang lugar ay talagang ligtas, no? So we really appreciated um, Secretary Berna's contribution to this discussion today. And for me, my takeaway was when she said it's really good for our mental health to travel. Alam ko marami sa inyong kulub na, cabin fever, sabi nga niya, no? Kasi ano eh, no? Parang napakahirap talaga from a mental health point of view, napakahirap na maging uh, mapayapa at, you know, maging maginhawa. Kung hindi tayo makalabas, we are naturally drawn to fresh air, to the sun, to the sea, to nature. And so it is really appreciated that even for local tourism, there is a big emphasis on this. And we hope that all our frontliners will have a chance to have a little bit of a, a break. You have to take care of yourselves and you know, to, to have a little bit of a vacation is really not selfish. It's good because if you don't have a break, wala kayong bakasyon, eh, magba-burn out kayo and we don't want that to happen. No? Now, Professor Richard Gonzalo gave us a very, a very important framework for understanding how to look at uh, the issues of transport in the time of travel, in the time of COVID-19. And the disaster risk reduction framework really helps us understand in the language of disasters, that there are many points of vulnerability. No? Hindi lang iisa ang lugar na maari kang magkaroon ng exposure, na, na maari kang magkaroon ng, ng COVID-19. Kaya napaka-importante unawain yung buong sistema, yung buong proseso, kung saan maaring mahawang isang tao at babawasan natin yung risk sa kada lugar. No? Now, of course, Engineer Happy talked to us about the more engineering side of things. Although he did talk about <clears throat> the human factor, he did talk about the protocols and the importance of understanding ventilation, the importance of understanding where ventilation is not happening and which forms of uh, transport actually may create some risk. So among all of the forms of transport that he mentioned, he did mention that the bigger ships may have parts inside the ship where the circulation of air may really be a risk factor for COVID-19. And of course, uh, Shelo Villaluna was very articulate, very appreciated by our audience. Sabi nga nung iba eh, kaya gusto nila ng PAL kasi ang galing daw nung representative nung PAL ngayon. <laughs> okay. But really, uh, explain the complexity. The complexity and all of the measures that have been taken by a large industry like uh, the airline industry and Philippine Airlines, which is our our national flag bearer, 
what they're doing to keep you know to keep uh to keep our passengers safe and we, we do have a very particular problem in the philippines we are the only country with so many overseas workers there is no other country on the planet that has that that challenge that we have so many of our our um of our people who leave the country and have to travel. And so PAL has played a very important role, not only in making sure that passengers are safe, but also in transporting vaccines and helping our OFWs. Okay, so I think, uh, Raymond, for me, the main, the main thing is that this is an evolving situation. Uh, maraming pagbabago, sabi ko nga eh, pumibilis ang, habang lumalakad ang panahon, we will be more efficient with medicines. We will be more efficient with testing. We will be more efficient in many different ways. And so we should not lose hope. Huwag kayong mawawala ng pag-asa. Marami na, eh, sabi ko nga kanina, marami nang nadaanan ng Pilipinas, ilang gera na, ilang problema na, we will, we will triumph, we will overcome. But we just have to hang in there, stay safe and survive. Ang laban nandito is your survival. I always say, you know, Everything else, forget it. You have to survive. And I think traveling safely is a good way to, uh, to survive. You don't want to get COVID. Maingat na maingat kayo sa bahay. Maingat na maingat kayo sa mga workplace. Tapos doon pa kayo magkakaroon ng infection. So anyway, next week, nako, okay. Diba? Sabi ko, exciting tayo next week. You missed the webinar. Meron tayong game show. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, no, no. We have, okay, so we're going to have a special topic called fact or fake. And this is going to be about social media. And we have four very brilliant uh, communicators who are going to be with us. We have Robbie Alampay, Dr. Jason Ligot. You've met most, all of them you've met. Dr. Jason Ligot of uh, Organic Intelligence, Robbie Alampay, ng Puma Podcast. Dr. Albert Domingo, who has subbed for, for Raymond at some point, and Joy Flavier Alampay, the Executive Director of Asia Society Philippines. And they are going to present uh, certain social media posts. And you will guess kung fact or fake. Okay ba yan? So ito ay ano, no, parang skills workshop natin to. Paano bang natin malalaman kung nakikita natin sa social media ay fake, or totoo. Okay, so meron daw pa-premyo si Raymond. Ano ba? Kaya <laughs> tayo, may mga nagsasabi, hindi daw nila nakuha yung t-shirt nila. If you mm. didn't receive your t-shirt, can you put that in the chat box, please? Kasi, you know, we want to make sure that we got, you got what was promised at anniversary and there could have been problems with your address or something. Please put that in the chat if you, uh, if you didn't receive your t-shirt. I don't know what Raymond's going to give away next, next week. <laughs> There will be prices. So there will be please, prices. There will be prices. Uh, please join us and invite your friends to join us. Kasi napakahalaga na ano eh, nakikilala natin kung ano yung fake news. So ito talaga mga dalubhaso. Sabihin sa inyo, bibigyan kayo ng mga trick. <laughs> Surprise na lang. Surprise. Excited na. <laughs> yeah, Raymond, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Susie, and thank you so much to our esteemed uh, panelists uh, for today. Very, very important po ang kanilang mga nuggets of wisdom. Uh, well, special shout out to uh, Michelle Villaluna uh, from the chat box. Uh, sabi niya, Michelle po kasi uh, used to be a newscaster, kaya po ganun kagaling mag-communicate. But uh, all of you, very important po ang inyong mga practical tips, ang inyong mga recommendations. We really are very, very fortunate to have each and every one of you join us for today's webinar. For next week, hindi naman po natin masasabi na credible online community if we are not able to distinguish between fact or fake. So, sana po ay mas marami pa po ang dumalo at sumali at mag-join po sa ating webinar for next week. For today's uh, webinar, uh, as you are seeing in the evaluation poll uh, and consistent with all of our previous 73 webinars, um, uh, 93, uh, at least 90% po ang strongly agree sa ating lahat ng ating um, questions as mentioned here in this evaluation poll. Uh, we also noticed uh, one of the questions po uh, um, earlier uh, in the chat box, hindi ko lang po na-replyan kaagad, um, 
So, all of our episodes in our Stop COVID Deaths webinar series, these are archived and can be viewed sa YouTube channel ng TVU people at your convenience. From the very, very first uh, webinar that we had uh, from April 2020, if I'm not mistaken, all the way to episode number 73, which was last week, and then after this week, po, after this episode po, for this week, episode 74, uh, you'd be able to see all of uh, the topics that we have covered in the last year and a half. So maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you rin po sa very hardworking team behind the Stop COVID this webinar series. Without each and every one of you really grinding and working hard to bring quality and credible uh, content for each of our webinar, we would not be here together with our uh, well with our uh, members of the audience po and our avid viewers. Maraming maraming salamat po. This brings our webinar to a close. Uh, we will see each other hopefully. Next week, same time, same channel from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Every Friday, it's a date. Together, we can stop COVID deaths. So keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online. The enemy remains unseen. I'll keep your hand in mine. Let's say a prayer one more time. I know you long for home, but I am here, you're not alone. I'll stay with you until the coast is clear. The others fame before my fears. The others lives before my tears. But right behind the mask, I look into myself and ask, Do I have strength to carry on? My oh God, how oh long will this go on? I need you here to keep me. I'm here to hold the line I'll keep my run Until my time Just look into my eyes And say his name to realize It's fine to be afraid Just hold on to the word he gave This time will come to pass Cause this salvation's made to last He'll carry you to see the break of day The others pain before my fears The others vows before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask Do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'm here to hold the line. I'll keep my head work until my head dies. From my fears, the others lives before my tears, but right behind the mask, I look into myself and ask, Do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'll keep my word, you would is mine. The others pain before my fears. Pushing on the spine of tears, please take us through another day. Just hold my hand. And I will hold the line. I will hold.